Okay guys, so in this video we're going to be taking a look at the Tiny QX90. It's a micro brushed quadcopter, um, bind and fly. And the reason that I liked this so much and was so interested in it was it came with a micro free sky receiver and it, it does SBUS and PPM and so also on top of that it uh, has a uh, F3 flight controller, brushed flight controller. So I think it's the same one that I reviewed just a few days ago. So. I'm uh, hoping that this is going to be a good flyer. So let's uh, get everything out of the box here and take a look at it. Okay, so here's everything that was in the box. Get your quad itself, obviously. You get your instruction manual. Uh, looks like some binding procedures for the Tyrannus. Looks like you get two batteries. Uh, some foam or Velcro here. Give you two spare motors, which is nice, and uh, you get one of each a clockwise and a counterclockwise. You get four spare propellers, they look like the Hubson style propellers. So I'll have to double check that. You get this um, nice little carbon fiber propeller remover tool, it's kind of nice. And you get this uh, charging cable, which is interesting because. Um, it uses a, a balance connector here, so it's taking these two batteries, which are 1S, and these have the uh, micro low C connector, and you're supposed to connect them both up to the charger, and uh, it'll balance charge them as a 2S battery. This is a 2S balance uh, charger here. So you, you have to plug this into your whatever charger you happen to have into the 2S port, but you have to have both of these um, batteries connected in order for this to work. So uh, maybe a slight oversight there. But it would be nice if they had a uh, separate USB charger just for the single um, battery for one at a time, which would be nice. Uh, but let's see how that works out. So here's a look at the battery. It comes with a micro low C connector and it's a one cell, 600 milliamp hour. It's really nice that they uh, they give you two of these. That's uh, this and the, the spare propellers and this uh, propeller remover tool are pretty nice little um, add-ons there. Just a quick look at the manual. Feel free to pause the video if you want to take a look. Okay, here's the quad itself. Looks like it's a carbon fiber frame. It's fairly stiff, a little bit of flux here and the this direction up and down, but it doesn't twist. Uh, eight and a half uh, by 20 millimeter motors. I'm not sure what kind of motors they are. They have, the, it looks like the style with the, the two holes there, so they look like they're Chaoli. No, actually, take that back. They have four holes, so I have no idea what those are because I've seen the ones with two holes, and I think those are the Chaoli motors. And they've got one of these. Um, all-in-one FPV camera and VTX systems here. Looks like it's got a pretty wide-angle lens on there. Let's see what the field of view is like. I haven't seen this model before. I don't know what this is. It's not one of the Eoshin ones, or and it's not the FX. This is, it looks like a totally new one. And this one has uh, dip switches back here for changing your channels. So I'm pretty sure this is 40 channel with race band. Looks like we got our F3 brushed flight controller there at the bottom. It's hard to see if it's the same one that I've uh, I've gotten from me earlier, but it does look pretty similar. I'll take a closer look at that because it does have the the one UART over there and the Spectrum connection here, and there's two UARTs over there, and that would be the buzzer connector. So I'm pretty sure that's the same one. And here's the micro free sky receiver. I'm gonna have to uh, do a tear down here and take a closer look at these components because I, I'm really curious as to what kind of a receiver this is and where it came from because um, I haven't been able to find that anywhere on the internet. And I, I really want to get a lot of these to uh, build some more free sky Tyrannus compatible micro quads. So it looks like they've got the. Battery connector here, and they got a routed 
through the front of the frame. Interesting. So maybe uh, they want you to connect the battery here on the side. You got some rubber bands here holding down the camera to this uh, accessory carbon plate here. And we got some nylon, a nylon standoff here in between that and the main plate. So that's where the, uh, looks like that's where the receiver is going. I'm not sure how secure that is. Looks okay. And I can see here we have a couple dip switches there on the receiver and a bind button. This antenna is a four, looks like a four lobe antenna. Yeah, it's a four lobe antenna here. This is uh, not as stiff as the Eosheen camera that I just uh, reviewed a few days ago. The coax here is a little bit more uh, flexible and it does hold its position so I could uh, move it up and move it back. So I'm probably going to leave it like that since I be flying fast forward like that all the time. Yeah, that's the same board. Evo brush. Yeah, it looks exactly the same. It looks like they've directly soldered on the motor connectors here. There's no um, JST connectors for the motors. It's just directly soldered on. If I can get that to focus. There you go. Focus. Cool. And looks like the battery just sits here on the bottom in between these landing feet. Let's see how well that fits. It looks pretty tight. Yeah, that looks like okay. Yeah, it fits. So you're probably going to put some Velcro there and uh, yeah, maybe use a rubber band on this little hook here to secure the battery when you're flying. I wonder how this camera is being powered. I can't, don't see the... Okay, I see it there now. Very small connector there. It's being hidden here. So it looks like right there is the uh, power connector on the board of the back of the video transmitter. Not sure where that goes to. It looks like it goes to the front. Okay, so they route the power through there and down. Yeah, I'm going to have to do a tear down here and take a look at this a little bit more closely. Okay, let's take the camera off. That should be easy, easy enough to do. So we got like one rubber band holding the camera down. And looks like there's some double-sided foam tape back here on the carbon fiber plate that's holding the camera on. Uh, the camera's off there, you can definitely see more. I think this is a nylon screw. Yeah, this is a, this is a nylon screw here, so be careful not to strip those if you're taking yours apart. Okay, so that's a closer look at the receiver. And again, no labeling or branding, so I'm not sure what uh, this is. Just by looking at it from this angle, and it looks like, yeah, it's, there's some double-sided foam tape holding it down. Uh, I don't know if I really want to tear this apart that much right now. Maybe I might, I might do a full tear down later. I'm going to fly this first <laughs> before we destroy it. Yeah, there's there's definitely some uh, there's a disc of double-sided foam tape there holding it down. But you can see there where the uh, wires of the receiver are going to, it looks like UART 
number two. And this, yeah, it's just three wires there for the uh, power and signal, and that's it. So I'm assuming it's, since it's going to UR2, it's running SBUS. We'll take a look at this in clean flight in a minute. And probably using these dip switches here will switch her from SBUS to PPM. But I don't know where on this board you would connect it to PPM, so. Where's the antenna for this? Okay, so there's the okay, so here's the antenna for the free sky receiver right here. It's just a black silicone wire. Hmm. Yeah, there's no information that I can see even on the underside, so no clue who makes this. Now you can see where the camera power goes, right there. Routing it underneath the uh, receiver. But overall this receiver is pretty large compared to the uh, flight controller. Because it looks like there's a couple layers of PCB board there. So, interesting. Okay, well, let's put this back together. Okay, let's see what this weighs. Copter by itself is only 39 grams, pretty light. Throw on the uh, battery there and we come up with 54 grams, which is exactly what was in the documentation. Okay, so let's take a look at this in clean flight, see what's uh, installed in here, if it's got any kind of tuning or if it's just got the, uh, the default clean flight settings. Okay, so uh, looking at clean flight, we can see that they've installed the latest version 1.13 and they've enabled Serial RX on UART2. So it does look like they um, did not just install a generic uh, version of CleanFlight with the default. So it looks like they did some custom work on here. And on the uh, configuration tab, we can see they have enabled SBUS. So it does definitely look like that receiver is SBUS enabled. And here on the PID tuning tab, we can definitely see They've put in some custom settings. Uh, obviously, they've put in uh, rates. We know that's zero, and these uh, uh, PIDs uh, for the roll, pitch, and yaw are uh, custom because uh, these are not defaults. And they can definitely tell that the, the D44 uh, is pretty high, but that's pretty normal for these little brushed quadcopters. I think the default is like 18 on clean flight, so. Uh, so it looks like they've done a little bit of tuning uh, on this model, which uh, we'll have to see how well it is. But it's good to see that they've done some of that, because if they just <laughs> flash the default clean flight, I don't think that this would fly very well. Okay, so here in the modes tab, we can see they've enabled arming on aux 1, and uh, also angle mode. So you can have angle or acro mode. So it looks like they have uh, enabled one of the channels for um, arm switching, which is which is good, and uh, it doesn't look like they've got any other aux channels enabled, so uh, if you have a six channel radio, uh, it should be fine. Uh, obviously this is designed for the Tyrannus, so um, that shouldn't be an issue. Okay, so as you saw in clean flight, it comes with the newest version, 1.13. It already has SBUS configured on UR2. The uh, default channel map is AETR, and they only have, um, I believe it was angle mode and arming on aux 1, so you need to set a switch for that, and I already adjusted mine to the way I like to arm mine is on this three position switch here, um, SA, and um, that's about it. Uh, so they only have a set for five channels that you could uh, obviously reconfigure additional things in clean flight if you already know how to, to do other things, but uh, those are the five channels you need. 
I already did the bind to the Tyrannus. Um, pretty simple, you just plug in the battery while holding down the bind button, just like any other FreeSky receiver. And then uh, go into your model and hit bind, and it looks like it, it bound just fine. So this is just the initial look at the QX90. I'm going to have some test flight video up here in a day or two. I just wanted to get this initial look, uh, look out to uh, the internet so people could take a look at this because I know there's a lot of interest. So I'm going to get this first video out right away so people can uh, make their decision if they want to buy this or not. So stay tuned to my channel. I'll have some flight video up pretty soon. Until then, guys, I'll talk to you later.